There's a 70-year-old mystery in chemical engineering. Since about 1940, uh, chemical engineers found that no matter how small they made the holes in porous baffles, the bubbles were the same size. Professor Will Zimmerman from the University of Sheffield is the winner of this year's Royal Society Brian Mercer Award for Innovation. We've invented a micro-bubble generation system. What prompted us to develop it was more the what, why isn't there such a device? Micro-bubbles are miniature gas bubbles of less than 50 microns in size. They remain suspended in water for much longer than larger bubbles and their high surface to volume ratio allows more gas to dissolve. Professor Zimmerman's technique for making microbubbles is particularly exciting because of its high energy efficiency. The major revolutionary element is creating the bubble on the size of the pore and doing so without any other source of energy. Field studies using microbubbles in bioreactors in several major industries are currently underway. Early results suggest up to an 18% reduction in energy consumption compared to other technologies. Wastewater has a microbial culture that needs lots of oxygen. An estimate is about 1% of the UK's electricity bill goes in wastewater. This works here treats the um, sewage from the um, Huddersfield um, and surrounding area. The biomass that we use to treat the sewage has obviously got a, um, an oxygen requirement. And so what we do in these large tanks is we um, pump forced air in through the bottom of the tanks and allow the, the bubbles to percolate up through the sewage. It uses um, lots of energy to, um, to actually drive the process. What um, Professor Zimmerman's technology offers us is the opportunity to um, make a significant reduction in the amount of energy that we consume in driving this type of process. Similarly, we're looking at algal biofuels production, in this case uh, with a major steel producer because they, they produce a lot of carbon dioxide in the development of steel, but not just the use of the power but also in the processing of the steel. And they'd like to sink that carbon dioxide uh, for a number of, uh, of reasons, but uh, particularly you can produce a biofuel out of al algal growth. Algae uh, needs carbon dioxide fed to it very quickly. Professor Zimmerman and his team are about to install a pilot biofuel reactor for the giant steel-making conglomerate Tata Steel. This site is one of the, the uh, biggest industrial sites, certainly in the UK. On site, um, we generate a lot of power and we do that by making use of gases that arise from within our processes and combusting them to generate power. We're interested in Will Zimmerman's bubble gen technology because it offers us uh, part of the step change in CO2 reduction strategy. Um, it's a novel technology which will help us to reduce the emissions from the plant in terms of CO2 by several percent. We've made a small scale bioreactor bio that incorporates uh, Professor Zimmerman's microbubble technology. As well as absorbing CO2, the algae produces oxygen when it grows and we have a huge demand for oxygen. Corus has two major plants in operation. Uh, we have a third plant on the continent in Holland, and now Corus is part of the wider Tata Steel Group. So there's plenty of opportunity to take this technology worldwide, both through Corus and Tata, and indeed to other similar companies. How do we create the bubbles? Okay. Imagine that you've got a flow of air through our fluidic oscillator. There's a, a main jet coming. Uh, into the oscillator and two outlets coming out. The fluidic oscillator is arranged so that a feedback loop switches the flow from one side to the other, back and forth. You can change the frequency of the oscillation by changing the size of the feedback loop. The fluidic oscillator is a device that allows a steady flow of gas to be turned into pulses alternating between two outlets. These pulses are what allow the microbubbles to be created at the diameter of the pore. The fluidic oscillator has great commercial potential because by changing the frequency of the oscillation, it can be tuned for different gases, liquids and bubble sizes. Additionally, it is energy efficient because pulsing the gas uses less energy than a steady flow. 
I mean, I take great pride in the fact that uh, Will has got this medal. And it makes a huge difference to us. It increases the publicity. We get more companies interested in the process because there's much better chance to um, reach out to a wider audience and to do tests um, all, all around the world, essentially, based on this sort of uh, uh, the award of the medal. Of course, one of the best things about uh, getting this award is the endorsement of the Royal Society, which will play very well when it comes to discussing with, with end users and, co and companies that we have developed a uh, device which is really very good.